After reviewing cars for 15 years, I've only driven Land Rovers a handful of times, most of those being the Range Rover. This is the second time I'm driving a Defender. I drove the Defender when it relaunched its new style just a few years ago at an off-road event. That one was the four-door version. And going into this week, I have no real attachment to the vehicle. I have no history with the vehicle. I was never a huge fan of the original Defender. There's a huge cult following for the Defender. Not that I think it was bad or anything, I just never got into it. So I was really excited when this showed up at the garage for us to review. And I'm excited to tell you guys what I think about it. Let's get into it. All right, and first off, let's talk about the different models, trims, packages that you can get on the Defender. Again, I'm completely new to this whole Defender thing, so all this was a learning experience for me. You have different body styles, which is the 110 versus the 190, and that's basically the two-door versus the four-door version. Then you have different models of the Defender. You have the Defender 90, the Defender 90X Dynamic, the Defender 90X, the Defender 90 V8, and the Defender 90 Carpathian Edition. And then on top of that, you have specifications that you can get your Defender in. So you can get the 90 in an S, an SE, or an HSE. This one is the Defender 90. I believe it's an SE, but it's also the first edition, which I didn't see really any documentation on Land Rover's website about. Could be because this is a 2021 model and not a 2022 model, but hey, I take whatever they give me. So if any of you are experts out there on the Defender, its history and what all of those mean, uh, and you wanna leave me a very long comment, go for it. I will read it, I'll check it out. But just going to their website, was a bit overwhelming. With that, let's get into the exterior. All right, let's start off with the exterior design, talking about the paint color. It is Pangea green. It's a pretty nice color. I like it on this thing. We have the white roof with black roof rails. And a signature for the Defender are those extra little windows at the top of the roof. Really cool. We'll talk more about that as we get inside the car as well. You do have the Defender nameplate right across the hood with the Land Rover badge there in the grill. This one does have the premium LED headlights with signature DRLs. They are automatic leveling headlights. We also do have the fog lights on here. And you have a nice mix of materials there with the bumper, with the bulging hood, and the extra little pattern on the hood. Moving around the side, you have those gloss black side mirrors, and those are heated electric power folding mirrors, which do fold automatically on lock. You also do have approach lights, so they will light up as you approach the vehicle. You'll also get a display of the Defender shining down onto the concrete. Really cool touch by Land Rover there, and a lot more intricate than a lot of these uh, projections that I've seen before. You do have the keyless entry system, so you can just push a button on the handle it will lock and unlock the vehicle. And it is the same button that locks it, that unlocks it. Those wheels are the 20 inch wheels. And we got some nice beefy tires here. And then in the rear, you've got the full size spare tire, the Land Rover badging, and that Defender first edition badge, as well as these signature LED taillights. All right, and let's talk really quickly about the size of this two-door Defender. First off, your wheelbase is 101.9 inches. The total length is 170.2 inches without the spare. With the spare, it's 180.4 inches. Your total width is 82.9 inches. And your total height is 77.7 inches if you have the coil suspension. But we have the air suspension, so it is 77.5 inches. But of course, because it is air suspension, it can be lifted all the way up to 11.5 inches, which is a really nice height if you're taking this thing off-road. Also with that air suspension, you're looking at a weighting depth 
of 35.4 inches. So first off, obviously big full size spare tire. This is not a lift up hatch, probably because of the spare tire, it is a pull out hatch. So it opens up like a door. You have a gas strut and everything to make it easy to open and close. You do have some nice little cubbies and pockets back here. Probably great if you're setting up a campsite or something to need just extra pockets. Cargo volume wise in this two door with the second row of seats folded up, you're looking at 16.6 cubic feet of cargo volume. Now you can fold those down and that'll give you 58.3 total cargo volume, which is a really massive area. So if you're just taking this out by yourself and you wanna fold those down, you've got a massive area to either put stuff or kind of camp out of if you need to. Again, I know these things are great for like overlanding trips and camping trips and people in the community really love them, especially the older ones. You also do have buttons back here to raise and lower the air suspension so you don't have to even be in it. If you need it lowered, you just come back here and hit it. If you need it raised, you can come back here and push the button. But we'll talk more about the air suspension as we take it for a drive. First, let's go check out what's under the hood. All right, so under the hood is the three liter P400 inline six MHEV that pushes 395 horsepower, 406 foot pounds of torque, is matched up to an eight speed automatic transmission. Obviously all wheel drive with a twin speed transfer box, top speed of 119 miles per hour and a zero to 60 of 5.7 seconds. Numbers that you probably don't care too much about if you're taking this thing off road, but they definitely help with the on-road mannerisms, which we'll talk about as we drive it. So let's go ahead and close up the hood. We'll talk quickly about the interior, the tech in there, and then we'll take it for a drive. So to get into the rear seat, you do have to obviously fold this seat out of the way. There are some buttons here on the edge of the seat that allow you to move it forward. But as you see, that just moves it forward to fold this up. You still have to pull this handle. And then you got a bit of a gap to get in. It's not particularly large. Even the kids had a little bit of an issue getting back here. And personally, I uh, can't or just won't, but we'll talk a little bit about those rear seats. They are nice materials, and once the kids were back there, they said the room, even with me in my driving position, uh, this seat scooted pretty far back. They had a ton of room, a ton of leg room, obviously headroom. Those glass vents that are up here at the top, I think makes it feel a bit more airy. I'm not exactly sure what the historical uh, use for those were, but they, they look pretty cool and it does make it feel uh, a little bit more open in the back seats. There's a ton of connectivity, including USB on the back of the seats. And then this little jumper seat has uh, accessory ports, USB type C and accessory ports. So lots of connectivity back there as well. And then of course there's getting out of the back seat where uh, there's not a lot to grab onto to kind of hold yourself as you fall out of the seat. But uh, pushing the seat back also doesn't push it all the way back this way. So you've got to hold the buttons down again and slowly get it back into position. So if it's raining outside and you're loading up your kids or something like that into the back seats, it's going to be a slow and painful time. But with that, let's go ahead and move into the driver's seat and really talk about this interior and what it offers. All right, guys, now we are in the front seats where I belong, and it's a fantastic interior. One of the cool things about the interior is this middle jump seat. You can just pull it up, and now you can go three wide in the front, three wide in the back, and we did do this during our week with it. Had my youngest kid here in the middle seat, 
me and the wife, and then kids in the back. Now again, it's tough to get into those back seats, so probably not a family car, but uh, if you need it to be, it can be. Also, myself, a bit wider. Uh, it is pretty tight in here when you are three wide. It's not a super wide vehicle. And even with the seat down and using it as an armrest and cup holders, it is a bit tighter than I would like it to be. It's definitely not a deal breaker for me, but you never know if you are considering getting one of these and you do have a wider stance or you don't like to be in confined spaces. You think the SUV is gonna give you a bigger feel. Most of it does, but this uh, middle seat definitely constrains that a bit. Other than that, the quality is really nice here. It's a very purpose-built interior. So when you first jump in it and see the minimalistic uh, design, you might think it's maybe even a bit cheap looking, but when you start touching all the materials, they're all really nice. These seats are leather and textile seats, power adjustable, heated with lumbar, very comfortable. But let me go ahead and pick you guys up and give you a better look around. And first off, this whole little shelf in the front is really nice and your infotainment screen kind of just sits like a tablet sitting in between there. Almost looks like it could be removed or moved around, but it can't. It is a 10 inch wide screen. And a lot of the info here is really nice and easy to navigate, easy to jump into things. And obviously we have some redundant buttons that we'll get to, but you also have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto available here, as well as a lot of great features, including cameras for off-roading. If you really wanna see a good look around the vehicle, this is a great way to do it. My only slight gripe here is that with the size of the screen, even it being a 10 inch, but it's a wide screen aspect ratio, your image is actually pretty small. So if you don't have a really good viewing angle, it can be hard to see exactly what's going on on those cameras, but you got a lot of different options here, a lot of different data that you can look at including off-roading. A really great look at the dimensions of the vehicle here, so you really know exactly where you can fit. And of course, you can jump into climate or the seats, turn on the heated seats and whatnot. But it's a really nice system. And again, I'm pretty new to the Range Rover brand, so I'm not sure how it is in some of the other ones. When we do our videos on events and stuff, it's more about the drive and not uh, the technology inside of it, unfortunately. But spending a week with this, it's definitely a nice system. Moving down a bit, you can see the electronic gear shifter, and it is real sensitive on clicking this button back here to be able to move it. And even if you're in drive, you gotta click it and hold it to get into reverse, which brings up the rear view camera. But you really gotta push that thing in. And then you got your sport shift mode and push button for park. And then you've got a bunch of physical buttons right here and some really cool interactions here. So these two knobs in the middle are multi-function knobs. So obviously we can turn up and down the uh, temperature. If you push at the bottom, you're doing your heated or cooled seat control. If you push the button right here, you are changing your fan speed. And obviously you can do the heated seat on this side. And then the button up here are your different uh, driving modes. So you can go from eco to comfort, to grass and gravel, to mud and ruts, to sand, to rock crawl, to wade. And as soon as I hit it, I'm already uh, adjusting my air suspension. So let's just get that back into comfort. So you do have your air suspension buttons here. So you can just click it and raise it or click and lower it. And then just some more uh, basic buttons. You do have your hill descent control, your low drive setting, traction control. Moving further down from that, you do have USB-C and USB type A connectivity down here. You also have an accessory port back here. So there is a lot of connectivity throughout this vehicle. Moving over to the steering wheel, it is a nice leather wrap steering wheel, a nice grip, nice design. You have these touch controls here for interfacing with the uh, infotainment system and the driver information system, plus all your cruise settings and your heated steering wheel button. 
which is nice to have. This rocker right here is your volume control. I guess I didn't mention your other volume control is way over here. So as a driver hitting that volume control is a bit awkward, but uh, obviously you do have a volume rocker here on the steering wheel as well. No buttons on the back of the steering wheel, no paddle shifters or anything like that. Then of course you have your stock for uh, your lights and everything and your windshield wipers, which are automatic rain sensing windshield wipers. Behind all that is your interactive driver information display, which can be toggled through a bit. No sort of head up display on this vehicle, which I might've liked to have, but don't, so it's fine. We do have the clear sight uh, rear view mirror. So you do have the mirror there, or you're looking at the backup camera. And lastly is the folding fabric roof. So this is not a moon roof or sunroof. It is a fabric folding roof. So as soon as you open it, you are completely exposed to the elements, which is pretty cool but we'll leave it closed for now. And with that, I think it is time to get this thing out on the road. Let's take it for a drive, talk about the drive, and then we'll uh, finish up with the price and competition and some of my final thoughts there, but let's continue the review. The first and easiest thing to talk about with the Defender is the ride of the vehicle. With that air suspension, it gives an incredible ride. Not only I noticed it, but the family even noticed just how nice of a ride this was, even on some backcountry roads that we take where it's very rough. This thing does outstanding. Power out of this thing is really great. That 400 foot-pounds of torque is really great offline really makes this thing feel like it's got a bigger engine than it does and it just uses that power really well to get up and going one issue with a lot of off-roading vehicles including the forerunner including the wrangler is once you get it up on the highway it's very loud and noisy not so much with this vehicle it's very smooth and if you need to get up and pass somebody or getting up to speed this has no problem doing it Land Rover does say that this Defender is the strongest, and most capable vehicle they have ever created with permanent all wheel drive, the twin speed transfer case and the new architecture that it's built on. And I completely believe that because it is a solid feeling vehicle to drive. Even when we took it off road, one of the things that I do remember specifically is just how solid and nice it felt doing all the same things that we took all these other vehicles. The Defender definitely just handled those as well as anything else and did it uh, with more comfort. Living with it day to day, the driving position is nice. Driving it is, again, super comfortable. My biggest issue is a little bit feeling cramped as uh, this seat is pretty wide and pushes in. But again, after a while, you don't really notice it. It's not a deal breaker for me. It's not bad enough where it's a deal breaker. Economy wise, you're looking at 17 miles per gallon city, 22 miles per gallon on the highway. And those are completely believable numbers for me, especially with that eco mode. Obviously they're not outstanding, but they are what they are. And obviously that's with this two door, three liter inline six variant. Along with it being a well-built and well-driving vehicle, you get a lot of safety features in here as well. As a driver, all of these buttons, especially the knobs that do multi-functions, are a little bit hard to deal with, but once you get used to it, I'm sure it's just fine. They say it usually takes about two weeks to really get used to using something like that, and uh, we get a week with these vehicles, so I've gotten pretty used to it as I've been using it, but obviously if you're buying this, the more that you use it, the better you'll get. I think one of the other big things that pretty much everybody that rode in this car with me and me myself have uh, noticed is just how high you sit. Looking at it from the outside, you don't think it's a very tall vehicle, but as you're sitting in it and you're passing other vehicles that you know are big vehicles, uh, you do sit high up. And obviously with that air suspension, you can raise and lower it. And there's a lot of play there. 
which is nice. Driving mannerisms are really nice. Going into corners, it handles itself well. It's not very wobbly. It keeps relatively flat for a off-roading SUV. And then again, the power out of this thing is really nice. It's going from about 11 miles an hour Seventy. Not bad, not bad. All right, excuse this interruption, but this happened after the review and I kind of wanted to throw it in there. Stopped at a gas station, came back out and started the car and I got a warning about the air suspension being malfunctioned. It says it's okay to drive, but uh, drive with caution. And <laughs> without that air suspension, this thing is not so smooth of a drive not sure what happened i tried to turn the car off i tried to cycle through the air suspension um, with the buttons inside and it still gave me uh, the same air whenever i turned the car back on it's interesting <laughs> but it definitely makes the uh, suspension much rougher for day-to-day -day driving Interested to know if it's a big issue out there or if it was just happens to be this vehicle. Anyways, thought I'd throw that in. But unfortunately, we don't really have a place to really take this thing to do what it's made to do. We don't have anywhere to really go off-roading in it. Not during our weekly reviews, but that's why I love doing the off-road events where you can get a better feel of how it does off-road and the Defender does just fine. So at the end of the day, there is a lot to love in this thing and it is a Land Rover, so fair enough. Let's go ahead and pull back over. Let's talk about the price and competition, see if we still love it after that. And then I'll give you some of my final thoughts after the full week and we'll wrap up the video there. Let's go. All right guys, so really great driving vehicle here, obviously, and uh, really great package overall. But let's talk about the price. So the base price for a two-door Defender is $48,700. This one, the first edition that we're sitting in here, has a total MSRP of 66,475. So depending on what you're looking at this for, that could be pricely or it could be a really good deal. I think it's a really good deal for the full package that you're getting here. But we'll talk about that more here in just a second. When you're looking at the competition, one of the first things that came to a lot of people's minds uh, whenever they saw me driving this thing was the Bronco. A lot of them said it looks like the new Bronco. Obviously, a really close size as the new Bronco two-door. Capability-wise, it could be compared to the Jeep Wrangler. You could also compare it to the Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro. And when you start throwing those names out, you might think that a Toyota doesn't compare with the Land Rover or a Jeep doesn't compare with the Land Rover. But when you start looking at price, the price actually is pretty close on some of the top end of those vehicles and this one. And this isn't anywhere near the top end of this vehicle. But I do have some other thoughts on the price, the competition, and just my overall thoughts on the vehicle after a full week. So let's jump back out of the car and I'll tell you about those and we'll wrap this video up. All right guys, so after a full week of driving the Defender, taking my family out in it, getting groceries in it, doing video with it, what are some of my final thoughts here? Again, after not really being too familiar with the Defender, with the old Defenders and what they're really capable of. Final thoughts, I love the car. If that hasn't already been made, uh, very apparent throughout the rest of this review. I really like the looks of it. I like the interior of it. I like that the two door is a six seater. I do have some issues with the interior space, obviously, like I already talked about, but I think those are things that I could live with if I owned it day to day. Even the price of this thing, I think is a really good price when you compare it to other things on the market. Now I did take the time to go look at a few online and seeing what they're actually selling for. And as of today, 
Uh, I did find a first edition that looked very similarly specced. There was a $80,000, so way over that sticker price. So I don't know if it's just this one. I didn't see a whole lot of two-door defenders even out for sale. There was more at reasonable prices, but, uh, but definitely something to think about as you're in the buying process, obviously. But yeah, after the full week, I'm completely sold. I think it's a great vehicle. I understand all the hype around it. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the Defender or if I got anything completely wrong throughout this review. Also, if you haven't already, go check out TXGarage.com. We do a lot of great written reviews over there as well as event and news coverage by a lot of different authors, not just myself. So it's a great place to go check out TXGarage.com. And with that, guys, thanks for watching.